Well, hello, and I hope you're doing very, very well. I have a great thing on my heart that I'd like to share with you. I was actually praying about where to share what I'm about to share. And I just thought I'd share it here, at least partially. Uh, and I hope you're blessed by what we're going to look at. I've been talking, it actually says in the book of Ephesians, it says that there's this very interesting topic. We've been looking at it for a few months and in different series, I pulled it into things that I've been saying. It talks about the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, people that are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Paul said to the Ephesian church, now this is what you need. You need to have this as well. Baptism of the Holy Spirit is an entrance way into what God has for you. Into into other things. Now, it doesn't mean that uh, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. When you're filled, you are. But there's other things that the Lord can open doors for. What it actually says about this, when it talks about the spirit of wisdom and revelation, there's some, in a way, interchangeable uh, themes in the Bible. This is interchangeable with, talks about the spirit of glory or the resurrection power of Christ or the spirit of uh, of holiness, often those are interchangeable, or at least they fit together. Many times it almost blurs where one begins, one ends. Sometimes it's interchangeable. It's only interchangeable because the Bible actually uses them interchangeably. So when we look at this, there's a little, it's not some great feat to try and explain this. It's, it's actually very, very uh, uh, out there in the Bible. A lot of the passages of the scripture that are harder to understand many times in the New Testament, it's on this topic in particular that it would be uh, you see. I want to just show you something here. 1 Corinthians 2, 7, it says that, uh, you, that you would have the spirit of wisdom and revelation from the Holy Ghost so that you may know him better. It's a doorway of relationship. There's a way to get to know God better. We can often come up with our own way of how we get to know better, one of the cool things in the Bible is the Bible doesn't say, you know, you have to take a wild guess. It actually tells you what you need to get to know him better. For those of you that know him, it actually gives you this as this incredible statement so that you receive it so that you may know him better. So it's interesting. If you want to grow in your relationship with the Lord, sometimes you're like, have I heard from the Lord? Have I not heard from the Lord? What am I to do to know him better? You don't really need to hear prophetically from the Lord here. He tells you in the Bible, he, he opens this to you. And it's a doorway of relationship to receive this with him so that you may get to know him, the Lord, better. So 1 Corinthians 2, 7 says, but we speak of God, wisdom in a mystery having been hidden, which foreordained God before the ages for the glory of us. Now, what's interesting here is this topic. It always inserts these things together. You'll see them. Which none of the rulers of this age has understood if for they had understood it, not the Lord of glory would they have crucified. So you see there's a spirit of wisdom and revelations in Ephesians. This picks up on it. It says, but we speak a wisdom of God in a mystery. So that's what it says in Ephesians. There's, when it talks about a mystery or things that are hidden by unless you see them by revelation, this, it says, is the topic. That's what it's referring to when you see this in the Bible, the New Testament. Uh, and then it says, it has been hidden, which foreordained God before the ages for the glory of us. So God, the glory of us, this is the most, one of the most incredible statements, I think, in the New Testament that you wouldn't expect. There's lots of incredible statements you expect. There's some that you don't expect. The, the glory of us is not something most of us would think would be in the Bible. So when you get to know him better through the doorway of relationship, it's for the glory of us. That's what it means. It restores us. There's a restoration of what God had originally intended for human beings. You don't want to be left out of that. That's the real question. Do you want to be left out of that or not? You don't. You don't. You want the glory of us... Uh, uh, to be revealed for our glory, what God has intended. Because really, once that happens, it does bring him glory. He, he's the only one that can restore it. He's the only one that can bring it to you. James 1, 5 says, and then this is the tie-in. If, if now any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask from the one giving God, 
to all generously and not finding fault, and it will be given to him or her. Now, the NIV reads it this way, a little simpler. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So when you talk about the spirit of wisdom in Revelation, it then says, if you lack wisdom, let the person lacking ask God. uh, And this is interesting. And in the direct translation of the Greek, it says this, to all generously and not finding fault is how he gives. Many times when we approach God, we think God will show me what's wrong with me. There, There can be times where the Holy Spirit absolutely kind of shows you something you need to change. We call that conviction. But I think it's highlighting this because it's saying our expectation is we're going to be in trouble. It's not because necessarily you need to be convicted of something. God's going to give this to you without finding fault. That is very important to see on this topic. There is something here that is very important to understand because how you receive isn't just feeling bad about yourself. And it's put here for a reason. If it's in the Bible, it's not mistaken. They, they meant it to be here. I'll read it again. If now any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask from the one giving, that is God, to all generously and not finding fault, and it will be given to him. So number one, if you ask him, he'll give it to you generously, and he won't find fault. There's times where he does find, you, you find yourself being convicted, but on this one, for some reason, it is worth mentioning on this topic that he won't find fault with you. Sometimes when your things are hidden from you or you have a lack of understanding, you think I'm not the most spiritual person in the world and there must be a problem with me. That's the next thought. God's not saying you're all bad and I got to show you how bad you are. There's times where you do need to repent, but this topic, it's not saying that and you need to hear that. Don't argue with the Lord on this. Don't argue with the Bible on it. And anyone who kind of would be fighting me right now in your own human sense, that's usually a sign of something not from God, that the enemy is trying to trick you or deceive you. There are times when God gives generously without finding fault. So it says in 1 Corinthians, but we speak of God wisdom in the mystery, having been hidden, which foreordained God before the ages for the glory of us. God wants to open to you a doorway of relationship to restore you to who he's meant you to be. Matter of fact, this isn't an afterthought. It actually says it's having been hidden, which foreordained, meaning God set this in motion in eternity. This is a hard thing to catch, but something happened in eternity outside of time. God set this in motion. And then this thing intersects in time into our life. That's how it's presented. You don't want to pull back from this. You need something out of eternity, out of time. This particular thing comes out of time, foreordained by God and intersects our time to take you to where God has promised he will take you. Incredible stuff. These are incredible passages of the Bible. You want to clearly hear them. And it's not over your head to do this. There's a relationship in the Lord that you and I can have. And it's not a burden. The Bible, this topic is what Jesus said. I want to reveal the Father to you. Meaning I'm going behind the Holy of Holies. I'm going to show you in the glory of the Father. And that's the topic when Jesus said, come to me, my yoke is easy. We Always quote that, but we forget that it's tied to him revealing the Father. It's a choke point. You can't, um, you have to have the Lord do this for you. If the yoke is going to be easy, it's when you're in this place. You're not second best. You're not an afterthought. You're not to be taken on a step ladder down. You need to go to the Lord and say, God, I need everything you can give me. Everything available for me. Now, I've talked and talked about this at church. I haven't put these two together or talked about this one scripture, but I want to advance everything that God that's understood in scripture for you, for me. I want to say it out loud here. It says, none of the rulers of the age of this world has understood it, for if they would have, they would not have. And it's interesting. 
When it talks about glory, it refers to Jesus as the Lord of glory. The Bible actually says, we looked at this uh, a couple months ago, Jesus is the, bears all the glory. If, God, if there's any glory that God shares and releases to move on your behalf, Jesus bears all the glory. So in the relationship, God has this stuff hidden, and it's in the relationship. Now, this is really the big point. Where is this hidden? Because it says it's hidden. So where is it? It's in the relationship. So there's things in your Christian life that you can't receive just by learning about it. It's in the actual relationship itself. That's, this is the big point. This is actually one of the biggest points that I've made about this topic over the last months. Where is it hidden? It's hidden in the relationship. So the relationship was, is, was actively producing this is what the Bible, these notes, are talking about. The notes are simply saying in the scripture, it's telling you where this is hidden. And God will give it to you. He, he, it's not just that there's an advance promise that you'll get it, but it's kept hidden in the relationship. If you go, if you come, no one comes to the Father except by Jesus. So only by knowing Jesus, do, uh, this is a doozy, do you get in here? But beyond that, we all know that as Christians, but what we don't know is where this is hidden is in the relationship. So you can know the truth, but not have the relationship. And that is very important. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. You can, you can have somebody nowadays when we hear the word hearing, often it doesn't mean we're listening. I heard you. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. The Bible says that word hearing is listening. So you don't have faith unless you listen to what you hear. And what's important here is it's the same con it's the same context or concept. You can hear what the Bible says, but not hear it and listen. So the Bible says faith only comes not because someone's given you the doctrinal information. You can have all the information in the world. You, I know people who are experts in the Bible, PhDs working in seminaries who don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Doesn't do anything. So you can have knowledge, but without the relationship, you have to, re to relate to this, it has to occur in the relationship. That's what the promise is. Once you're filled with the Holy, what's the first step? Number one, be filled or be baptized in water. You must respond to God to be baptized in water. If you've said yes to Jesus, you got to be baptized in water. Number two, be baptized in the fullness of the Holy Spirit and speak in other tongues. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill you. And once you're full, that says then you can move into this area. You can't really get there without doing those other things. You can't get there without those other things first. You may, maybe you could maybe see this, but you don't necessarily have the relationship. So what we want for you is what? The glory of us to be restored, meaning there's a restoration of what you were intended to be. And it's looking more and more like the only way to achieve it is in this relationship through Jesus with God. And he will release it. And if on that point, it's important to put this down. If you ask in here, in this area, God does not sit there and necessarily find fault with you. That's what's in store for you. Sometimes we go to the Lord and we're very nervous. If I get really close, what's going to happen? Nervous in our heart, nervous of things that have happened. You may find God welcomes you. And it's not, it's not uh, just that you know this information is actually connected to your heart so it's your heart that connects you to this if your heart connects to the lord if it turns to the lord doesn't mean you're perfect doesn't mean that everything is wrong that's over in your life but if you turn your heart to the lord then you can trust god that he'll release blessings that we just don't conceive this is the topic that the verse in the Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has in store for those that love him. This is what it's about. And it actually says it in the verses around it. 
So I just want you to know, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. Have you knocked? Have you asked? Have you seen what God has for you? Well, the Bible says on this topic, you haven't. No eye is seen. It's hidden. The relationship. Uh, and, and without this, I, I think that this sounds like a strange thing. These days in which we live, without this, they're all, you almost need it to make it. To blossom as a Christian in these days, it's imperative to go all the way with the Lord where he's taking you. You don't want to just stop halfway. I am preaching right now. My hands are coated. This is interesting. I was uh, not barbecuing. I was bonfiring today. I have some very old wood. It's actually so old at my house. When I moved into my house, somebody had this wood stack beside the house. And uh, Elizabeth said, I think the old, old, old wood needs to go. So I was like, I put it on the bonfire and I couldn't light it for all I was worth. I was finding pine cones and I was like putting them all over the wood to get something going. You don't have to get something go going with God here. You just in your heart have to ask. It, it, it's just a matter of the relationship. You don't have to necessarily, I wouldn't say fuel the fire. You just come with a humble heart to the Lord, trust in him. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll direct your paths. Is anyone listening to me? Say amen. God bless you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.